Well, hello, and uh, thanks again for taking time to be able to join us for our pastoral-led Bible study. I'm actually just going to make a smaller devotion out of it today. Uh, Pastor Mark and I are still catching up on a ton of different elements in the uh, church uh, post-Easter here. And just again, thank you to everybody who joined us for all those different services. Uh, we had a wonderful time. Hope you did too. Uh, most importantly, we were able to really get together and have that time of in-person worship or worshiping with us online to be able to celebrate the greatest news that has ever been given to us, uh, the story of a son who comes to live, to die, and as we celebrate on Easter, to rise again for our sins. So today, uh, for our devotional time, I would like to maybe extend it just briefly and kind of uh, go along that same campaign trail that we are on of following Mark in this journey of going alongside of Christ in exactly the story that is portrayed for us in the Gospel of Mark. So we left off last time uh, finishing up chapter 6, and so today I just want to look at the beginning of chapter 7, and then Pastor Mark and I will probably come back around to it next week, review it, and then hit the rest of the chapter. So if you're following along with me today, we're in Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse 1, and we'll just take it maybe a couple verses at a time and probably just go through the first uh, 6 or 7, 8 verses or so. Uh, it's entitled, Clean and Unclean. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. I'm going to pause there at verse 1. So today in the text, uh, these individuals, these Pharisees, these teachers of the law that gather around Jesus, that come to him, have actually been sent or are going on kind of uh, an exploratory trip to be able to find out more about Christ. What are these things that he is saying? What are these things that he is doing? And they're really taking time to investigate him. Uh, they've heard a lot about him. They seem to think that what he is doing is not good for him. Uh, a lot of the things that his disciples are doing are, what we would say, contrary to what they're teaching other people. And so it's creating this disruption in their life. Uh, this is just one area of scripture that we see continues to build this uh, back and forth between Jesus and the Pharisees, uh, religious leaders, Sadducees, teachers of the law, in which uh, the two of them just are not getting along. They don't see eye to eye, in particular because Jesus is bringing a very different message than what they are providing, one that really does give the people more freedom and probably more of a leadership uh, position within just faith in itself, being able to focus on what the Lord has done for them and continues to do in their lives, and this miraculous gift that they receive through Jesus, not just the things that they have to do to hopefully stay lockstep with what God has. Uh, because as we'll see in just a second, a lot of what the Pharisees and the Sadducees are offering to the people, or telling them they have to do, are actually man-made laws. They are not mandates that are given uh, from God to the people. All right, verse 2. Uh, so uh, they gather around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. So uh, one of the laws the Pharisees had created, which there are hundreds and hundreds of, is that they needed to be able to wash their hands in a certain ceremonial way to be able to uh, handle different food items. And this wasn't even necessarily just for cleanliness. It was actually being done is the step you had to follow to be able to actually just eat or to be able to be clean in the presence of God. And this happened in a lot of different ways. It wasn't just eating food. Uh, it continues on. Verse 3, the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing holding to the tradition of the elders. So there's some of the key verbiage that's there for us in our scripture. It doesn't say that they're washing their hands so that their hands will be physically clean. They're using soap and water, as we would tell our children or grandchildren to be able to do. So you have clean hands before you eat at the dinner table. It's actually this ceremony that is happening. It's almost this, well, in a lot of ways it is, this outward sign of something that they are doing. Notice uh, what they're doing. Ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. 
It isn't uh, for the cleanliness side. It isn't even for uh, a mandate that God has given to them, a law that they have. It's something that the elders have passed down. It's just this tradition. It has nothing to do with, with uh, being able to worship God, being able to honor him in any way. Number four, excuse me, verse four. When they come from the marketplace, uh, they do not eat unless they wash. Uh, also in the marketplace, now this would be a gathering of a whole bunch of different people, uh, some people who are considered not to be clean. And so even just passing through this place or being in this area, they would say that uh, people would become unclean because they were around others that were unclean. So again, they would have to wash ceremonially. Uh, and observe many other traditions, as well as washing of the cups, pitchers, and kettles. Again, this is not for cleanliness. This is being done, so it is this outward sign that all these things were taken care of just right. Uh, in some ways, it would be uh, maybe a tradition that we have or that you have within your own church, but maybe it's just a tradition that is, that is man-made. And there are things that we want to do to be able to honor God. Don't mishear that uh, today within our message. We want to be able to do things that uh, respect uh, tradition. We want to do things that honor uh, times of worship. But we want to make sure at the same time that we are not trying to do something to earn our salvation. Or that we are not thinking that we are making ourselves better than someone else. That people on the outside are unclean and we are clean because of the things that we are doing. Uh, when it gets down to it, as Christ is trying to point these individuals to, is they are only clean because of what God has been, is doing, and will do for them through the work and person of Jesus Christ. Obviously, they do not know that at this time, but it is something that is coming in their future that he's trying to point them to. Uh, verse 5, So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? So they're you know putting it on Jesus' disciples. You know these are the guys that are following you. Uh, they represent you. You're supposed to be training them up as their rabbi. Why don't they do this tradition? They should be they should be doing this. And here is where Jesus answers, actually coming back to them with a piece of scripture. Jesus, he replied, verse 6, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. It's the perfect passage to be able to utter in their presence, because it's exactly what Happen, is happening. It's not kind of like this situation. It is the exact situation. And uh, even more, uh, the Pharisees would have known this scripture. And so Jesus answers being able to use what they would have said is the, the word of God from this prophet Isaiah. And this is exactly what is happening. Again, listen to these words because it's not just for the Pharisees to be able to take to heart, but for you and I too. Uh, there's some law here today that really should pierce us and allow us to think about our actions, our words, our inaction as Christians who portray that we are followers of Christ, especially in uh, this post-Easter element in which we live in. We all came together just this past Sunday. We celebrate what Easter is, this great news that God has given to us in the resurrection. But how do we live as God's Easter people? Again, he says, uh, these lips honor me, uh, excuse me, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Uh, is that like you at any time? That we confess who God is with our lips, but then our hearts do something different. We're not following that path. We're not actually uh, putting our actions where we have said we are going to go. Uh, I think the truth of the matter is all of us do this. And it's good for us to sit back and say, you know, why do I do that? Why do I say these things so easily and then I fall into this temptation or to that or to this inaction of being able to follow the Lord? And he goes on further. He says, they worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. 
And so we need to be careful with that element too, uh, that we aren't saying that certain things, even within our church, are more important than the time that we have to truly be able to worship God with our hearts. Again, tradition, uh, order, uh, very important within our services to be able to follow. But what is most important is making sure we're taking that time to be able to honor God with exactly uh, who he created us to be, the, the servants of him, these individuals who honor our Lord with everything that we have, do, and say. And I know this can become a, a stumbling block for us, and maybe even just looking at people in the world, people who maybe we think at times are unclean, and we as Christians can be cleaner than them, but that's really not the case. In fact, uh, this Sunday, in our scripture message that we're going to focus on for this sermon, uh, we're going to have a couple different lessons that really encourage us to have fellowship with one another, but knowing that we have fellowship with each other because we have things in common. One of those things we have in common is that we are all sinners, people who are in need of the Lord's forgiveness. But the other thing we have in common is that the Lord came to die and to rise again for all all of his people. And so today, uh, don't be depressed in those times that we know that we have failed, in which our hearts have been far from God or have maybe slid away from him, or when our mouths have confessed something that we haven't followed through on. But focus on that which God has given to us, about how he is constantly beckoning at us, always coming back, always giving us that extra chance. Not that we try to use those things and try to burn through extra chances, but that we focus on how much love and forgiveness our God has given to us. Uh, that we don't have to follow every single law to try to earn our way to heaven, but we do follow that which he has given to us about being a people who need to come to him to ask for forgiveness and to be able to know that he gives us this through Christ. All right, uh, why don't we pause there for today, kind of an uh, abbreviated study that we have together. Again, Pastor Mark and I will pick up, maybe review even a little bit of that next week, and then we'll move into the rest of our, our Bible study together. Uh, hope we can catch you next week. Hope you can catch us on Sunday. Before I let you go, let's just say a brief prayer uh, together. Please join me. Uh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity uh, you give us to be able to uh, serve again as your Easter people, individuals who recognize that forgiveness that you have won for us on the cross and over the grave. Uh, Lord, uh, we cannot wait to be with you in heaven one day to experience perfection and your love and your presence as a whole. But until that time comes, please allow us to be able to serve as your people here on this earth uh, boldly moving forward with your word and your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, again, uh, thanks for your time today, and we will see you next week.